Monday. So we designed Evie last week. No, no, we didn't. So we made Evie last week and then you all took a vote and decided that Vaporeon above all of the others is the one that you wanted to see. So that's who we're making this week. Now, as per usual, a written version of this pattern will be sent out to my patrons and will be made available in my store. And I will leave links to both in the description down below for anybody who's interested. Let's get into tools and materials. Okay, so to make Vaporeon, you're going to need eight ply 100% acrylic yarn in four main colors. So you're going to need a main body color, color for his head and tail spikes, yellow for inside his fins, and white for that ridiculous neck ruffle. And you're also going to need just a small amount of black to embroider on a face. So today I'll be using 9mm safety eyes like I have with my other Pokemon because I want them all to match. However, for this pattern you might personally find that 12mm are more appropriate. So if you have those available and you're not making the whole team, you might choose to go with these ones instead. You'll also need your 3.5mm hook, scissors, pins and needles, and some stuffing. But that's it! Okay, so here is the Vaporeon we are making today. And I can see why you guys voted for him because like his body shape is pretty spot on if I do say so myself. So for Vaporeon, we actually make this head, body and tail all in one piece. And then we have to make all the tiny little pieces to sew on top of it. So we're gonna start by working up the bulb of the head. So grab the main body color you're going to be using and we're going to start by working up to 24 stitches around. and then shaping the rest of the head. Okay guys, so I had actually finished recording all the way up to the end of the tail when I realized I hadn't hit record again. So I frogged the piece and come all the way back, but you're going to have to forgive the lack of continuity because the eyes have already been snapped on. But basically we get down to the end of row 11, which means you are 18 stitches around. And at that point we need to position our eyes. So I counted six rows down from the top of the head and then just evenly placed them on either side of what is clearly going to be the snout. I found it helped for me to visualize where I was going to stitch the nose on and position the eyes accordingly from there. <laughs> so uh, now what we're going to be doing is working up the trunk of the body. Now keep in mind for this that the head isn't looking directly ahead. So the body is going to feel slightly skew with as you form it off to one side. So here we are at the end of row 18. You'll see there we've worked up part of the chest as well as started to work up the butt. Now the kind of magic of this particular piece is that we curve it around into the tail, right? All as one piece. Now what that means in terms of structure is that we need to close off half of this opening and leave a gap in the side that we're gonna work our tail out of, which is gonna involve the use of short rows. But before we do that, we're just going to firmly stuff what we currently have. Now, while you work up the tail, be sure to stuff as you go. So there are four lots of short rows in total used to curve this tail, and we're about to start the first one. So the first one starts with single crocheting three together, like so, and then five single crochet. We are then going to chain one and turn and work back into the stitches that we've just done. We're going to work a row of 16 single crochet. Now the first six of those will fall into the stitches from the previous short row, and then the remaining 10 will stretch out along the round. And chain one and turn. So what that's done is lock into place this half moon of stitches that we're going to work backwards and forwards across to close off. And what that will do is leave the opening in the side where we'll start extending out our tail. So we're gonna go ahead and finish working those short rows now. So at the end of that last short row, we are going to not chain one and turn, and instead we're going to continue by working around 
the whole edge of the piece. So starting by working down the edges of these rows, you're going to insert three single crochet. Then we're going to work eight single crochet across the top of the opening. And that starts by inserting the first one through the stitch that also has the short rows coming out of it. That's just going to help minimize any gaps. The eighth stitch will also be worked in a stitch where the short rows are connected. So into that corner. We are then going to work three single crochet up the edges of the other side. Which will bring us back to the four stitches we worked in the final short row. And we are going to put a single crochet into each of them. Just like that. So what you should have there is 18 single crochet that you can now work into and it should be sticking out at an angle from the body. So that is our first lot of short rows done. Now we launch basically straight into our next lot which we are using to curve the tail out from the body. So just a slight angle turn out in this direction. So we're going to do those now. So there we are, and now we are once again going to work around this opening. So without turning, we're going to work three single crochet down these edges, then four single crochet along the base, three single crochet up the other side of edges, Brings us back to those final five stitches that we worked in the last row of the short rows and in them we are going to put a decrease and then single crochet three together which should leave you with a round of 12 single crochet that you can work into so I'm going to stuff a little bit at this point you should too if you haven't up till now so now we're going to work two rows of 12 single crochet around that is just to extend the tail out from the body a little bit and give it a little bit of length. So there we go. So now we basically just need to work up the rest of the tail. Now there are two more sets of short rows to do, but I feel like you've got a good handle on them now. So we're just going to continue on and work up the rest of this tail. We're then going to finish off make sure that you've stuffed it all the way to the end and then use your tail and weave it through the front loops of the remaining six stitches and pull tight to close now if you find yours is looking a little bit bumpy make sure that you've distributed your stuffing evenly but all in all, that's the shape that we should be looking at here. Okay, so now that we've finished making the main body worm, we're going to be making the legs. Now, because there are so many pieces to this particular design and there's nothing particularly special or, or tricky about the legs, what I've decided to do is just show them on the screen with their full pattern. I don't think they warrant a full walkthrough. So get your pause button ready and we're about to whiz through how we make each of the legs. So front legs. Haunches, and back feet, tail fins, so 
So there we have each of those. Now we are just going to pin them on so that we don't lose any pieces in the process. Like so. So there we go. So now we have all of her base pieces done. It's time to start making the ridiculous decorations she normally wears. So we are going to start by making the hat that she's wearing. Now the hat is constructed from this skull cap kind of piece, which we'll make first. And then we need to make two side fins and a top fin. So we're gonna start with that skull cap. We're gonna grab our dark blue for that. And just like when making the head, we're going to start by working up rounds to reach 24 single crochet. Just like that. So then we're going to work two rows of 24 single crochet around to give us a little bit of height. So just like that. And at this point you can try it on and make sure that it fits his goofy little head. So mine's fitting just nicely there. If you're using the same weight of yarn, it should fit comfortably. So from here, what we're going to be doing is adding the spikes. So Vaporeon has kind of like this widow's peak thing. So we're going to start by doing two single crochet, like so. Then in the next stitch, we're going to be working an increase. So I work mine as invisible increases, which just means that the first stitch goes through the front loop only and the second stitch goes through both loops. Now I did go into that in a little bit more detail in the Eevee video if you're interested. And we're gonna repeat those stitches two more times. So those are the starts of his three points, believe it or not. And then we are just going to work 15 single crochet back around to the start. Just like so. In the next row, we're gonna be locking in those points a little bit more clearly. It is the final row of this piece. So we're going to start with three single crochet, which brings us to the second stitch of that first increase that we did. And in there, we're going to do an increase. But for that increase, we're going to work the first stitch, and then we're going to chain two, and then work the second stitch, just like so. So what that's going to do is give us this nice, clearly visible little point on our hat. So we're gonna repeat that whole process two more times. So work three single crochet, then an increase with two chains in the middle of it, and then three single crochet, and the final increase. There we go, so you'll see there we've got our points. Now remember this stitch because we are going to be using it again when it comes time to do his collar. But for now we're just going to finish off this row with 14 single crochet around. And then just because we want a nice smooth finish we're going to work a slip stitch into that final stitch and finish off. Now just to make extra double sure that this end is nice and hidden. I'm going to insert my hook from the underside through the next stitch and just pull that tail through to the inside. So we just tuck that in and get that nice smooth side. So there is his little hat with his spikes on it. And note that you don't really want it to sit on top for obvious reasons. You actually want this to sit along the back of the head, which means that there might be a little bit of an air pocket that you can feel in there, but you won't notice it at all after we've sewed it on. So plonk that on his head for now. So next up we've got fins. So these little fins are constructed as a flat piece that we chain one and turn at the end of each row. So grab your pale yellow and I'll show you how to work up, I'll show you how to work up this main top fin and then the side fins are just worked up using the same technique. So we're going to start by chaining seven. like so. Then turning your work and starting in the second chain from your hook we are going to work a slip stitch and then five single crochet down the side of that chain. So far so good. We are then going to chain one and turn our piece and working back up through those stitches in the back loops only which means the loop on the side pointing away from you. We're going to work four single crochet. Like so. And we're just going to skip those last two stitches. We're not going to put anything in them. We're going to chain one and turn. And once again, working in the back loops, which will be the loops facing away from us. 
going to work four single crochet back down. So chain one and turn. We are then going to work two single crochet, still in the back loops only. Skipping the last two stitches, chain one and turn, and then two slip stitches back to our starting point and finish off. So that is the head fin that we've made. Now we also need to make two side fins and they are slightly different and the side fin pattern will be appearing on your screen right now. So pause now to make two of your side fins. So I have two side fins here and you'll note that one looks a little bit different to the other and that is because just the final finishing touch on the side fins only, not the head, is we're going to grab one of our tails, it doesn't really matter if it's the top or the bottom one, and we're just going to thread it through these spare front loops of the two rows that are there visible. So it's just those two front loops on top. Give a little pull, it just sort of pulls it all in in a very fishy manner. I'm just going to tie these in a knot to lock that in place. And they'll be tucked away inside the head when we sew it all together. So there are two little side fins and his top fin, but you'll note that they're supposed to have this sort of dark blue edging on it because for Vaporeon, less isn't more, more is more, darling. So grabbing your dark blue again, and I suggest leaving a longish tail to make the weaving the ends in a little bit easier. On each of these pieces, you're just going to join at the top point and single crochet down to the knot on each of them. So do that now for all three pieces. I also just want to give a little shout out to Skein Spider here because the back loop technique that I'm using for these fins uh, was inspired by the little gold fish pattern I did of hers a couple of weeks ago. So you should absolutely check out her channel too if you don't know it already. Just like that. Um, so you should easily be able to see which one is your top and which two are your sides just because the side ones form a point and this top one has been left straight. The top one goes on top and then one on either side. And so that's what Fishy Boy currently looks like. Next up, we are going to make this lovely line of spikes that go all the way down to the tippy tip of his tail. To do that, we're going to need our navy blue again. And we're going to start by chaining 35. There we go. So that might seem pretty long to you, but if you grab little dude here, and you line the base of that chain up with the back of his head. You can pin that in place now as well. We're just checking the length of it. Note that it's going to run down his back in a curve and then around to the end of his tail and suddenly it's going to not seem long enough. So you'll get a feel for that there. So that is going to shrink up on us a little bit, but that is also okay because the neck frill will also take up some space. And then we've got a nice repeating sequence. So if you turn your work and start in the second chain from your hook, in the first stitch you're going to slip stitch, then in the next stitch you are going to single crochet, chain two, and then single crochet into the same chain. So you'll see that that gives us this tiny little point. We are then going to slip stitch into the next one. So there is our first spike. So we're going to repeat that along the length of the chain until we reach our last stitch. So just like that, and you'll note that it's a bit curly at the moment and that's fine, you don't need to worry about that. But in that last chain, we are just going to put a final slip stitch and finish off. So if you give it a little bit of a tug, it will straighten out a bit, but it is going to want to spiral, but that's fine because we actually want it to curl around anyway, so it'll actually sit nicer if it does spiral. So the end with the extra slip stitch is the end that goes at the tip of the tail and then straight up the back. So, just like so. And again, we'll fiddle around with it a bit. So last but not least, this fellow needs his neck frill. Now, here is the one that I made during the 24 hour challenge and I hate it, <laughs> but we're, I'm gonna use the same base pattern, but I'm gonna just do the spikes the same way we've done them on, on the headpiece, so it'll match up a little bit nicer. So it's gonna look a little bit different to this one here. So. This piece looks like it's built in the round, but it's actually constructed as a flat piece. And we are gonna start by chaining 25. 
like so. So we are then going to turn our work and starting in the second chain from our hook, we're going to repeat six repeats of three single crochet and an increase. We're then going to chain one and turn and we're going to work four single crochet and then one of those increases with the chains in it. So we'll start with our first stitch then we're going to chain two really tightly and then single crochet into the same stitch to finish the increase and there is our point and we're going to repeat that the rest of the length of this frill. And then we're going to finish off. So the way this collar works is it's going to wrap around the neck and we'll just join those two ends together as we sew it on. And you'll note that it's toned down a little bit from the original, but I like this version a lot better. Okay, so now that that's all done, this brings us to the meat and potatoes of this project, which is actually the assembly. It's going to take, honestly, probably longer than it took you to make all of these little pieces. So I'm going to start by unpinning everything. Okay, so here are all of our pieces unpinned and for now we're going to move anything to do with the head out of the way and we're just going to look at the legs and the tail fins. So grabbing Wormy. So the first step of this is getting the legs in the right position so that your Vaporeon can sit flat. So we're going to start with our haunches. So again identifying where that eighth single crochet ridge is, position it over the hip and pin in place. So we're going to pin all of the legs in place to make sure that he sits flat and then we'll be taking the leg, we'll mark where they are but we'll take them off so that we can sew the haunches on first. So just to prepare you for what's coming. So that's where I'm putting that first haunch Then we're going to stuff the second one down inside. So I found the most success by pinning that bottom corner down to kind of level with the base of the first one. And then I'm just going to tilt it up slightly on a diagonal and wrapping it around the body. It is probably the trickiest piece to get right on the whole Vaporeon, which is funny considering what it is. So from there I'm going to grab my back feet. They are going to get pinned to the haunches so that the closed side face is forward. And what we're actually doing here is it's almost like a, a height check. So make sure that you don't insert your pins directly from the bottom because you don't want them to mess with it. Note that I'm inserting one from the side so that the bottom can sit flat. And the second one goes right next to it, just like so. So when I put him down, he's still a little on the crooked side. Now I might be able to fix that by just bending the tail up a bit. And that worked, that worked really well actually. So all I've done is I've grabbed the tail and I've tilted it up a bit to get that curve a little bit off. So that's what he looks like. He's almost dragon shaped like this. I almost wanna like, give him some wings, some paws. But we're not, we're not doing that. We're not getting distracted. So that is probably where those back feet will end up. But just to be sure, I'm gonna loosely pin these front paws in place. And how I line those up is so that the bottom of the front paw meets the bottom of the back paw. So it might look a little bit low on the body. But again, it's just one of those things where once all of the piece is on, it somehow just starts making sense. Now, if your tail refuses to stay upright where you bend it, you can always give it a little bit of a stitch against that leg once we're done here. For now, just bending it up should encourage it to hold that shape. So once you're happy that your Vaporeon is sitting nice and flatly, and I am, like she's got a little bit of a tilt to her, but she's, she's flat enough, honestly, given that she's a tailed creature. What I'm going to do is take these front legs off and what I can do if I'm worried about getting them back on in the perfect position and I've taken a long time to get it right is just move those pins into the body right where I want the top of the leg to sit so that when I go to put it back on I can just rest it up against those pins and pin it straight back on where I where I had it before so that's just a little trick that I do sometimes with these fussier pieces because sometimes it feels like oh no I don't want to unpin I just spent ages getting that right I'm, I don't want to do that but you gotta do is leave yourself a couple of little pin markers and they'll go straight back on where we where they came off in the first place. So there we go, we're back to just our haunches and we're gonna sew those on now using a little of our main blue color. I'm going to sew them on in a very particular way. So I'm gonna insert my needle through the gaps in the stitches of the body only. So that's just how I'm getting started there. 
leave that sticking out because it's a bit ugly. And then I'm, what I'm doing is, is I'm inserting my needle through the front loop only, so that's the outer loop of the piece, from underneath and then stitching over and into the body, working in the gaps between the stitches only. And what this is going to do is get us a beautiful flat edge between these pieces, so it's less obvious that you've sewn two pieces together. And I'm going to continue that the whole way around both this haunch and the next one. The key here is really to work through every stitch on the leg we're joining on, to make sure that it is fully sealed the whole way around. There we go, that was the last stitch, and then to finish off, I'm just inserting it back through a gap in the body and out a little ways up. So you can see there, I actually think that's a really nice join. It's nice and smooth the whole way around, which forms those two pieces together, at least in my opinion. Sound off in the comments if you've got any other advice for people, and we'll all learn together. So that's the first one, and I'm just going to do the same thing to this one here. It's going to be a little trickier because of the shape, but exact same sewing technique for it. Just like that. So next up, you're going to grab your back feet again and pin those back into place. And at the same time, you can pin your front legs back in place. So make sure he can still stand up on his own. And then we're just going to sew all four of these feet on. So we're going to start with the back feet and sew the open edge down to the body and then the top of the foot up to the haunch if it's flapping a little bit oddly. And then just sewing around each of the shoulders to attach the front legs. We're going to do that now. So there we go. They are sewn on now. So I did end up sewing this leg here back to the haunch as well as connecting this foot with this foot to get them to sit in the right position. So please be prepared for um, a little bit of extra stitching just to make it really hold its pose because we are cramming a lot into the same space. Now at this point here, what you can do is grab your tail, bend it up against these legs and stitch it in place if you would like to. I'm personally not going to because I like having the ability to move it around a little bit, but because I'm not going to, it means that sometimes when I go to put it down, it's warped out of position and I have to just encourage it back up where I want it to sit. And you should also make sure that all of your ends are currently woven in for the pieces that we've attached. So next up, you're going to grab his hat. We're not gonna do the tail fins because they actually catch your yarn as you try to sew it on. Now we attach this, as I mentioned, to the back of his head and you're going to wanna scoot it down and rotate it to make sure that off those three spikes, the middle one falls directly between the eyes and then one will fall on either side as well. There should be at least one row of stitches clear between where your eyes are sitting and where this hat starts. And if that's not for you, if yours is sitting forward over his eyes, make sure you rotate it back to the back of the head. Now, when you sew this on, we're gonna to wanna to emphasize each of those points. So you'll note that I just grabbed each one with a pin and pulled it down slightly. It's going to really encourage them to be nice and visible when we stitch this on. Okay, so now using some of your dark blue, we're going to sew around the whole edge of this skull cap the same way we sewed the haunches on. So picking up the front loops only and working in the gaps between the stitches. Like so, and goodness does it look silly. Got that nice firm foundation. And now we're gonna be attaching the pieces slowly that are a little bit more fragile or prone to being like warped. So next up, we've got our neck frill. So because we didn't make this as a round, we don't have to try and cram it over his head. We can just unhinge it and attach around his neck. Now, you're gonna wanna adjust the angle of this a little bit and make sure that it's sitting high enough. It does. It is meant to sit right up under his chin. And I like to make sure that one of these points is directly under his chin and that my opening is at the back. And that's because most of the time when you're looking at him, you'll be looking at him from the front. And so we can hide that, that little opening piece at the back a little bit more easily. It's not super visible when we're done, but it's always just nice to have things tucked away out of sight if we can do it. And make sure that it's also resting against the back of the head there as well. That's important that it meets that point. And when we sew this piece on, we're going to sew up that little opening at the back as well to finish sealing the piece. And then just take a little bit of your white and sew it on around that inner edge. Just like that. So I don't know about you guys, but I am a lot happier with the new version of the collar versus the old version of the collar. You can let me know in the comments which one you prefer. If 
it's overwhelmingly that you want the old collar, I'll just drop it in the notes somewhere. Okay, with that done, we're going to grab our back spikes and identifying the end that has the extra slip stitch, we're going to pin that to the front center of the tail at the very, very tip. We are then going to take the other end of it and pin that to the center back of the head, making sure that it's even space between those two shoulders because that actually signifies where the spine would be. And in this sort of curved around position that might look like it's off to one side compared to what you would think is center. I'm just gonna put a couple of pins in there to lock it in place. It should be right up against that white rough, which is exposing the somewhat messy join I ended up making between the two pieces. So then what we're going to do is with the rest of this piece is make sure that it is centered around where the spine would be. So I'm just moving it down. And so basically the goal here is middle of the tail all the way up and then curling up into position where the top of the spine is. And I'm just gonna drop a couple of pins into position to make sure that I maintain that nice curve and that good spacing as I sew it on. And I'm just gonna sew that on using some of my navy blue. So once you've done that, weave all of your ends in. So there we go, looking lovely and spiny, my little friend. So the next bit we're all just gonna do in one big hit because there's nothing else really fancy going on. You're going to grab your two tail pieces and you'll note that they've got like a fat end and a skinny end. So the fat end is gonna go against either side of this tail. Make sure that you position them so that the top of the tail has the spines coming out of it. So then they, these two pieces go on the sides. And we're going to just sew them on there like that. And then we'll be doing the fins on his hat. So what you'll do is just, first of all, identify your middle fin. And you're gonna count two rows back from that center spine and pin the dark blue side facing forward. And then the rest of it trailing down the center of that hat, like so. Checking to make sure that it is in fact centered. And then each of his side fins the dark blue line of them will attach to where that side corner is and then trail them around the edge a little bit. Now, if you're unsure where any of these pieces are meant to go and my video is insufficient, make sure you look up the original artwork for Vaporeon because while this is a mirrored pose, it is the exact same pose as shown in that artwork, or at least it's meant to be. So that might help you understand a little bit better where each of these pieces is supposed to go. Okay, so the top piece, we're going to sew along the whole bottom edge. And these side pieces, we're just going to attach in these middle points. And you're going to sew all of those pieces on now. And then last but not least, we have to stitch on a little nose. So just pick a nice central stitch. And try not to make it too derpy. I do, I do my best. And there is your finished Vaporeon. Now I hope you had fun making her with me this week. I know that there are seven others that we haven't covered yet on the channel. I am putting out written patterns for at least five of them. They will be sent out to my patrons and available in my store at some point. But if you wanted to see me cover more of them on the channel, you have to let me know in the comments because at this point I'm thinking I'm going to move back on to possibly some more dragon or not my idea type content instead. I hope you all have a terrific week and I will see you next Thursday. Okay, bye!